Go about. Well, hello everybody. We're cooking today. We actually we've been cooking all day here at my house, but tonight Joe is going to teach me how to make his slap your mama potato salad. So Joe, yeah. tell us tell us all about that. Yeah, I love this potato salad. Um, traditional potato salads are a little heavier. They have more mayonnaise in them, and I've never really enjoyed that. Um, this has uh, it's more of a mustard base, but it uses Creole mustard and Dijon mustard with some apple cider vinegar to give it a little tartar taste. So, and it has a little lighter taste. It doesn't. It's not as thick and fatty as some, even though it does have mayonnaise in it. But yeah, I like it better. Yeah. And then, of course, I kicked it up with some uh, andouille sausage, which is a Cajun sausage, Cajun smoked sausage. Mm, sounds sounds delicious. It oh, yeah. smells delicious. We um we grilled out. We did a uh, well. David did ribs, what he calls a uh, charquettes, because they're they look like little bricks of charcoal. But he did mm -hmm. ribs, and we also had some some skewers with some steak and some fresh veggies from the garden. And so we threw the andouille sausage on there as well to get ready to make this stuff. So it smells okay, great. great. Oh man, I can't wait. I cannot wait. So Bobby, you'll be doing, you'll be cooking, you'll be making Joe's potato salad. Correct. All That's right. What I'm doing. Last time, he was doing, he was making your um, chicken and uh, dumplings. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you guys have just dumplings. switched up. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Apparently, right. she thinks I can't follow instructions. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Mm -mm. I'm sure what that's all about. <laughs> Folks, they've been they've been they've been bickering. I'll have to watch that episode all week. They've been bickering all week like a married couple. <laughs> okay, so let's get uh, let's get rolling there, Bob. Okay. Well, Joe sent me this slap your mama potato salad um, recipe, mm -hmm. which called for a pound of andouille sausage, three pounds of red potatoes. Um, we've got mayo. Now, you said Creole mustard. I wasn't sure what Creole mustard was. What I got was some Papa Doo mustard sauce. So, is that close enough, Joe? Oh, that's fine. Uh, Creole mustard is a <clears throat> it's a large seed mustard. It's a it's a it's a coarse ground mustard, but it's not as as uh, it's, well, a, it's a coarse milder. ground Dijon. But yeah, it looks a lot like coarse ground Dijon, which is good. Okay. Which, uh, which I prefer. Um, and you can use any any mustard combination of mustards in this, so the fact that you couldn't get Creole. Zatarans is the most common brand of Creole mustard. You usually find it on the top shelf in the mayonnaise section. If I had um, gone to uh, my favorite grocery store, I probably would have found it, but I had to rush to yeah. Dominic's because we didn't get back home last night until like midnight it's a, from the north. It's a, it's a, it's a, like I said, it's a milder, kind of creamier mustard. Uh, Zatarans. Coarse, it's coarser, yes. okay. coarser ground. I'm gonna write so it's it really good when you're putting in something that you want to be a little, you know, have mustard flavor, but a little creamier. Maybe not quite as harsh as all Dijon, which okay. is why I use it in this. I use it in a combination with Dijon mustard. All righty. Well, because I prepared a bunch of stuff ahead of time, I took some snapshots so I can send those over to you later. Of me chopping up everything the way you told me to do. Oh, yeah. oh, that's so sweet. Oh. Oh. And by sweet, I mean you're well, sarcastic. Well, it's working really well. Um, and I just actually put the potatoes that I cubed. The red potatoes are just on fire, so. Okay, okay. so okay. you bring them up to a boil just till they get tender. Then. Okay, Bobby is moving her PC over. Uh, let's see if we can find them. There we go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Those are nice and sliced. Did I do and good? I, yeah, that that's fine. And, and potato salad is one of those things where it's like it doesn't matter how you cut your dad cut potatoes. Yeah. I like everything like bite sized and. I do too. I usually I usually get uh, with the red potatoes. I'll just quarter some of the small ones and then cut the the larger ones up a little bit more. Yeah, I like good just bite sized pieces. You know. Okay. One piece fits mm -hmm. in your mouth. Well, I do have the, uh, actually I've got organic apple cider vinegar, which I love this stuff. I don't know if you've oh, yeah. ever tried that. Right, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Uh, actually, we get that in Trinidad, surprisingly. Do you? Yeah. yeah. It's, mm -hmm. I, I love apple cider because it has just this unique tart flavor to it. Um, and I, I did try other vinegars with this recipe, and I, I always went back to apple cider every time. So. 
All right, let's see if I can set this up so you can see where I'm preparing everything. Okay. okay. Nice. There we go. There we go. So that just started. It's starting to come to a little bit. Starting to bubble a little bit. It's not at a boil yet. How how long? This is the one problem I have when I make my granny's potato salad. I I cook it and it gets too mushy. So okay. So so here's the, here's here's the thing. Check it. Um, as soon as it starts to form bubbles. In the, in the water, because when you're starting with cold water like this, with, mm -hmm. rather than some people just take them and throw them in boiling water. Yeah, but, cold but if you start, water. Yeah, if you start like this, one, it, it brings the starches out to the edge so the, the sauce clings to it a little bit better. Um, but start checking it as soon as bubbles start forming, even before, and fork tenders, as soon as you can put a fork through it cleanly, easily, with very low pressure, it's done. That's it. Okay. You know? You just want them, and the thinner, you, like the smaller sizes um, that they're cut into, the quicker they're going to cook that way. So really, I mean, we're only talking, you know, not even five minutes, right? It shouldn't, and it, it depends on the potatoes, but yeah. It, yeah, it shouldn't, and you salted the water, so that'll I did, use, I did salt the water, and I got the red potatoes. So. And um. that's important, too, because cooking potatoes like this is a lot like cooking pasta. Your only chance to season them in the water which you're cooking in it. So you salt that water like you do pasta water. Okay. Actually, Cause, because cause once, the, once the potatoes are cooked in the water, there's no chance of actually seasoning the potatoes. You can coat them all you want to, but you're not actually going to season the potatoes. It's not going to soak in. Now, when you when you use salt, we, we've talked about different types of salt before, and I'm, I'm a huge user of Himalayan salt, and sea salt occasionally, and I've almost, I don't even think I've bought regular good old Morton's iodized salt for a long, long time. But is that I what you're using when you salt your potatoes? Usually one of the two, it's either, either sea salt or kosher salt or, Okay. And I kind of go in between which, whichever is handy. And add some more of this. Yeah, and, and Himalayan and sea salt are a little bit more, they're a little stronger than uh, uh, like a kosher or a regular table salt. Yeah, but but stronger, but yet not quite as salty, really. They, well, not as bitter. They, they don't have that, right. that bitter taste to them. Like if you oversalt something with regular table table salt, it becomes bitter. You can get away with it a little bit more with sea salt. Sea salt is probably the easiest to salt with. I I think, and I like the flavor. Now I did not peel my potatoes because I try not. I never peel my potatoes. I, I never them. do. I never do, and that, that's one of the things. And everybody's different. Whatever. If you want to peel, peel. Tomatoes and potatoes and yeah. everything. But I right. like well, the, the one. The, the peel does have some good flavor, but you have to take like a. I usually take a stainless steel uh, pad and just scrub them under cold water. And what you do is you get that outer layer off, which is bitter, mm -hmm. but you leave that mm -hmm. inner, nice nutrient, softer peel on the potato. So that's the yes. way I do mine. And, and plus, you get that nice red, vibrant color. So. Okay. That's exactly how I do my potatoes yeah. too, Joe. But that's but a, that's if you're, but if you're that's a good yeah. Tip. yeah, but if you if when you're boiling your potatoes, if you start to see uh, the peel start to come away from the potato, you cook them too long. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can just stop and make mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. you know, even when I make my mashed potatoes, I mash them with the peel on. Well, that, I was going to say that too. And if you do screw this up, same ingredients, everything, mashed potatoes. Same thing. Potato okay. salad, mashed potatoes. Easy. I'm gonna try yeah. real hard not to screw it up. I've done nice that thing. a couple times, and yeah. So, yeah. so Sanya, this looks like something yes. you you will try. Sanya is from India, folks. Hi, Sanya. Nice to um, see you. Hey, yes, I nice see you too. Um, well, mm -hmm. uh, we never really make potato salad in India. Uh, more likely to make some sort of curry with potatoes. Uh, yeah. I've had potato salad before. Uh, but uh, it's, it's always been at friends' houses and things like that. Right. So yeah, I'll definitely give it a go. But there are some some ingredients that I don't really I can't really get here in India. Things like uh, apple cider vinegar, for example. I can but get grape can, vinegar or wine was, vinegar. Or something. I was like actually that. just uh, I would say you can use grape vinegar will work mm -hmm. on it. Um, a, a wine vinegar, a white wine vinegar would work, but not a red wine vinegar in this case. The red one, then okay. it, it won't pair well with the rest of the ingredients. Mm. 
And then well, Monica, as, far as, and as far as the sausage, and I don't know if you're a vegetarian, uh, I'm not going to assume anything, but it's optional. But if you're not and you can't get the sausage, you can either use any good smoked sausage or you can put lamb or chicken or whatever the heck you want to it, and it's still going to taste pretty good. Mm. Well, I'll probably Monica's use something like chicken or lamb. Yeah. Yeah. And in Monica's fact, I think a good seasoned lamb would be really good in it. Monica just joined us. Hey, Monica. Hi, Monica. Hey, Monica. hey guys. What I'm you cooking? We're, we're cooking Joe's Slap Your Mama Potato Salad. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's what it says. This variation on potato salad is so good, you will have to fight the urge to go slap your mama for never making it for you before. Mm. No, no mamas were actually slapped in the making of this delicious dish. dish. Oh, that's good. <laughs> That sounds yeah. good. I feel like some potatoes, actually. Yeah. Well, you're just about starting to bubble up over here. Yeah, and you'll probably see that nice uh, film forming on the top of. The I water. do, and I will show everybody else. Which is which is the starch is starting to cook out of them. Hmm. You use some red potatoes, or you use regular? Uh, red. red potato, red potatoes. Red potatoes hold up uh, a little bit better, in this case for potato salad. Uh, one, two, they taste really good. They have a nice flavor to them. And three, you get that nice little red color. Adds color to your dish. So. Yeah, those are my favorite. Yeah. So yeah, they're coming up pretty nicely here. So do you do you keep it on a high boil yeah, until you? Yeah, I just keep it on high and I, I check periodically. And it's like I said, as soon as they're fork tender. Uh -huh. Take them off, uh, drain them, okay. and, I actually, and I actually just noticed. Uh, well, should be actually, looking, looking back there. Yeah, you, you drain them, but you but like pasta, properly cooked, you don't drain or you don't rinse them. Right, you wanna, just you, you drain. Don't, you don't want to wash that nice starch film that's on the outside of the potatoes because that's oh. what's going to help the sauce just stick to it. Okay. So it's going it's to adhere to the potatoes. It's going to be better. Well, I'm going to grab my colander and stick a fork in these and see if they're done. Because it's, it's, it's kind of the one that the, uh, every time I see somebody in the South rinse pasta or potatoes, I just want to strangle them. <laughs> I don't <laughs> rinse. I just force them. It, be, it becomes, a, becomes a habit, I think. And yeah. People get used to eating that. It's, no, I don't want to stick into my pasta. But that's the way it tastes good. But this one, Sonny, you said you had potato salad, and this one's a little different in the fact that most potato salads are a little bit of mustard and a buttload of mayonnaise, and this right. is pretty much just the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's it's, it's uh, got more, okay. more mustard in it than it does mayonnaise, and the mayonnaise is just there actually to keep keep it a little creamier. Keep it yeah, creamy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You give it a okay, well, that that sounds good. So it, it's got mayonnaise in it, so it's, it's, it's not exactly a health food, but it's not as bad for you as some of them. Right. Most of what we traditionally ate from down in the southern United States isn't considered health food, but we're making it healthier as we go along. Well, in the, in the south, when you say health food, that means you used half as much butter as you used. Half as much butter, that's exactly right. So. Well, I made a whole mess of greens today with no butter, but there was some bacon grease and pops. So. Yeah, I'm working. I'm working on perfecting my uh, a mayonnaise alternate, uh, which is made with yogurt. But I haven't quite got it. And I posted it the other day, but it's not. I was on your perfected. I was on your site earlier, and I saw that recipe. And actually, I've tried to make my own mayonnaise before, and I kind of failed miserably. I'm. Well, I need one more ingredient. It's, it works great for like making a sandwich or using it like regular mayonnaise, but when you cook it in something like this or you put it in something like potato salad or you put it in tuna salad or something, because it's got more water than normal mayonnaise, it breaks mm -hmm. down once it hits water. So I'm actually looking at using um, uh, a low-sugar pectin to, ah. to, as a thickener. I toyed to the ideas of gelatins and some other stuff, but I need something that will make it more sustainable when I put it in another dish, so mm -hmm. still experimenting. That's what's fun about cooking. It's always an experiment. Yeah. yeah. 
And people that read my recipes once should probably go back and check them later because I have a habit of going back, you know what, that didn't quite work out. Let me change this. All of my recipes have, have red, you know, pen marks, scratched off, change this, change that. Every single time I try, I might do something different. Yeah. Usually with my potato salad, I would mix the mayonnaise with um, sour cream. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. so sour cream is a good alternative. Yeah. Yeah. And um, use a little more sour cream than mayo. And I also um, chop up some fresh chives or spring onions and put in that mix and then mix it in with the, yeah. with the potato salad. Yeah, that's that that that's a good uh, good alternative. Like I said, when uh, like with the mayonnaise that I was making, it's, it's yogurt based, which is has it almost you know almost a similar consistency that that sour cream does, not quite as creamy. Right. But yeah. again, again, they're both they're both wa both water based, water -based yeah. whereas mayonnaise is more you know emulsified oil. Mm. Yeah, and that's exactly. Really all it is. And oil base, it'll break. another minute or so, I've already got it. When you put mayonnaise in something that's water-based, it doesn't break down. Well, that's, I'm having just the opposite problem with this uh, trick. Have you tried I get it done, I think helps. Yeah. Have you tried using a different um, culture of yogurt? I'm using a, uh, a plain Greek yogurt, which is thicker. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. But now I haven't. Yeah. Uh, or maybe putting some um, putting some sour cream with it. Not too much yogurt. Well, I well I put well I put um I actually take uh, some softened cream cheese. Right. Yeah. And and that actually gives me the creamy texture that I need mm -hmm. for the to replace the creamy texture of, of mayonnaise. Of mayonnaise, right? Um, and what I need now is the um. Uh, the the ingredient, that magic ingredient, to tie it all together and keep it from coming keep apart, it from falling apart, yeah, falling yeah. apart. Which is basically what happens when I put it in the tuna salad. That's exactly what happened. It just kind of, yeah. it still tasted good, but it did. It just it fell apart. Okay, okay. Bobby. I'm gonna try. So are you trying? Okay. See if these are. Uh, yeah, they're not crunchy. They're just a little bit firm. That's perfect. That's actually perfect mm -hmm. right there. The way that the way that Fork went right in that second one you pushed. Yeah. Perfect. They're, they're perfectly done. And there's no peel coming off, so I think I did right. yeah. All right. Take, it, take them out, drain them in your colander. Yeah. Drain them, and I'll be right there. Sanjay, so, so Joe, are, are you something? trying to? Yes. Are you, are you trying to make that uh, mayonnaise without uh, using any egg? No, actually, I do use an egg yolk and a little bit of oil. But it's only uh, it's a very little bit amount of amount of oil. Uh, okay. It, um, it is. I'm pulling it up right now because I <laughs> can't remember the exact. Uh, because period. otherwise, uh, you might. Uh, yeah. Are you using some sort of a blender, like a high-speed blender, to to no, emulsify? No. Well, no. I'm actually, I'll actually I'll actually do that by hand. Um, a blender will actually, if you use a blender or a food processor when you're trying to make homemade mayonnaise, and a lot of people do, if you're not careful, if you have it on too high of a speed, you'll actually cook the egg before the it has a chance to emulsify yeah. with the oil. <clears throat> so the the base ingredient actually is, uh, so I use either a blender or, or I'll just, I whisk it by hand, and it's not yeah. that hard. It's one egg yolk, one cup of, uh, I use grapeseed or olive oil, and then it's a cup of Greek yogurt. And then a little bit of uh, some cream cheese, some Dijon mustard, lime juice, zest of lime. <coughs> okay. A little bit of salt and pepper. Well, I've, I've made the taste, uh, the, mayonnaise the, before with with olive oil. Uh, yeah. I think they call it aioli. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And and it's really good. Um, so this this is it has a base of of a mayonnaise, but it's it's you know it's basically mayonnaise uh, and uh, a little bit of mayonnaise, half mayonnaise and half yogurt basically. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not that it's not mayonnaise, but it's it's kind of a 
full maze alternative. Okay. Trying to trying to get more. The important thing is to try to get yogurt into people's diets, and the taste is spot on for craft mayonnaise. I mean, you can't. You absolutely. If you make the recipe the way I made it, you cannot tell the difference between between craft and and, and craft what you mean. and this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got the I got the I got the mixture perfectly in that sense. Uh, so we're just working on the. So, on the so for how, how long you been um at it with this particular mayonnaise recipe? I've tried doing something similar before in the past and kind of just gave up at one point. And this was actually, um, I started about two weeks ago, with, two and a half weeks ago with the idea, playing with the idea. And I made the first batch, um, didn't quite work out. And then I made the second batch. And that's when I added the cream cheese and adjusted some of the flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, I originally decided I didn't need, didn't want uh, lime juice in it, but then wound up realizing that I did. I needed it. Even though Greek yogurt has a, a little bit of a tart taste to it. A little bit of tart, yeah, right. You don't need as much. You don't need. You don't want to use lemon juice because that's too has too much tart to it. The lime juice, yeah. a little bit of lime juice. Okay. Um, you you're gonna post that recipe? Have it posted up on your site? I posted that one up on my site as it is right now. Um, like I said, it's still a work in progress, and uh, you can look for it once I. Get my, I've got to get my hands on some uh, pectin, which is it's a low sugar pectin, which um, like normal pectin, fruit pectins will thicken based on sugar and acid content. Mm -hmm. A low sugar pectin uh, usually comes with a calcium packet, and it's the calcium that causes it to thicken. So, and you know, I've told you the ideas of using uh, gelatins, but I really don't want to go that route if I don't have to. Uh, the gelatin will just make it a little too too thick, I think. Yeah, it'll make it. I think it, I, yeah. I think you're right. Because I think if I make it almost a consistency of a jam, then we're closer yeah. than we were. Yeah, I th maybe, I think not, the, maybe not quite that thick. But the, the, and the you don't base. want to use... Oh, sorry, you don't, you don't want to use any sort of commercial <laughs> stabilizer, I assume. Right. I, I, want, I want to use something that so a home cook can get, on, get themselves... Mm -hmm. You know, without okay. going to a lot of effort, uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, or or a lot of cost, because you know that, that's the other thing. I don't want to negate uh, the health benefits of it with you know a higher cost. You know, because right, that's just right, silly. Right. It's silly to me. You know. Okay, I'm out of parchment paper, so I couldn't spread them out on that, but I've just got them kind of yeah, that's single fine. layered in a couple of bowls in a platter. Yeah, and the whole purpose of that is just to kind of speed up the cooling process because you don't want to. If you toss them in too soon before they start cool, you know, if they, they don't cool enough, then, you know, it kind of gets a little runny and mm -hmm. it's not quite as good. I tried yeah. one and I think it has just the right amount of salt. Yeah. And and the other thing, too, is you, you don't want to start cooking any of the vegetables. If the potatoes are too hot and you put them in with the onions, then the onions will. Start to soften. Start to soften. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. So you want you want them to have a you want them to have a nice good crunch. So. Well, do you ever yeah. cheat and throw it in the freezer for a few seconds, or? I, usually, I do. I, usually, <laughs> I do, and I, but I, I usually toss them in the fridge. Actually, in fact, yeah. you could probably do that now. If you got room. Yeah. I think I will, and I'll, while I'm there, I'll get get a little glass of white wine. I I I, I, knew, she, I knew she had ulterior motives. <laughs> while I'm there. You know. Yeah, I, I throw mine in the in the freezer. Yeah. Brings down I, the temperature I, quickly. What, what I usually do is, uh, while I'm waiting for them to cool, I, I kind of time it out like this. Mm -hmm. I put them out on a on a on a, a cookie sheet with some parchment paper or whatever on a, a you know single layer, and then I go and turn around and start chopping my onions and putting everything else together. And by the time I'm done that, they're cool, and I can just throw it through the bowl, and I'm done. Because so, that's about how long it takes. As long as it takes to chop the chop all the ve vegetables and put the other ingredients together, that's about how long it takes to, to cool. Because they don't have to be completely cool; they just have to be cooled off a little bit. Right, right, yeah. Because you're gonna typically you're gonna make this ahead of time and refrigerate it. Anyway. But you know you can't eat it straight away. You know, you know some. In fact, I know some people don't can't stand cold potato salad. They want their potato salad to be. Fresh cooked and still a little warm. And oh. 
My daughter loves my mother's potato salad warm, mm -hmm. which is actually my grandmother's recipe. But that's one of the and that's one of the bad. Uh, and I say bad things, but if you're like if you somebody like that that likes warm potato salad, because of some of the ingredients, you can't heat it up. Mm -mm. You know, you're, you're going to wind up with mashed potatoes. No, you have to have it right right out of the pot. Right. So once it's chilled, it's chilled unless you take it out. But I have taken mine out and just let it sit out on the counter and covered. You know, come up. You know, look, get a little warmer for a little bit before I eat it or serve it. Yeah. So. Because cold, cold sometimes isn't all that good either. Well, I can show you what else I have prepared here, and, and I can let Maggie May out because she appears to want to go out now. Um, like I said, I did take pictures of everything. I took pictures of the sausage right off the grill, and oh, that that's that's another question I meant to ask you, Joe. You put andouille sausage right. in your right? potato salad. I do. Okay. And some people put, you know, I've seen some people put bacon in there. Bacon's great. There's nothing wrong with bacon. You can't go wrong with bacon. That's right. Just saying. I don't, I don't, want, any, <laughs> I don't want to get any bacon haters on my butt. Um, <laughs> bacon is great. A ham is great. If you can get, if you, you know, don't like sausage, perhaps. Um, if you can't get andouille, um, then a kielbasa is great. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. you know, a, a good kielbasa is a safe replacement for andouille anytime. Andouille, yeah. Uh -huh. Um, you're not going to have the, the extra spices, but and then again, some people don't, uh, aren't that keen on uh, the heat. Um, but yeah, and but the other thing is, you can leave it completely out for a totally uh, vegetarian dish, which is which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not vegan because it's got pigs in the mayonnaise. But pigs in the mayonnaise, right? Yeah. <laughs> And, yeah, you know, no and, and 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 you know, in the South, you know, the, the kind of the joke is is vegetarian in the South means that the cow that we put into what we're making just ate hay. <laughs> that's, that's vegetarian. In the South. They were they were grain fed. Uh, okay. I got it this morning and I boiled a, a half dozen eggs before I looked at your recipe and I'm like, oh, no eggs. No eggs. That's that's the other. No, I'll make towel eggs tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I love it as eggs in some salads, like uh, tuna salad and things like that, but sometimes I don't make them, and they're, they're kind of one of those optional. Mm -hmm. But I know I know a lot of cooks in the South, I know a lot of cooks in the South that if you don't have boiled eggs in it, it's not tater salad, yeah. and it's not tuna salad. Boiled oh, eggs man. and cut up sweet gherkin uh, pickles. My grandmother would not use relish. She had to cut up in tiny little pieces. I, I like those, but I actually prefer the dill. I ain't cheap too. I mean, I like the gherkins, I like the little dill gherkins. Yeah. Or the or the, uh, and I'm probably gonna mispronounce this. Those cornicones, um, which are, uh, I think they're a little French. I think they're French or Italian. I can't remember. Uh, but they're good. But you can't get them down there hardly. They're you know what I started like using them. instead? Wickles. Mm. Well, Wickles are okay. They got a little kick to them. They've got a good taste. Yeah, they're good. Okay, I'm gonna start mixing up your sauce if you want me to. No, go ahead. The the only what I was gonna say is that one of the only problems I find with some pickles um, is you wind up with a soft pickle, so you don't have that same crunch. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that pre-made uh, dill relish or sweet relish has a little bit more crunches. It's you know you can always count on it to be a little crunchy. Um, sometimes you get some of those gherkins in the center of them are soft and mushy and. Yeah, that's not really that good. That is one thing we don't get here. Yeah. Yeah. Was that pi pickles or, uh, or relish? Uh, pickles. We do we do get uh, sweet relish. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that just started coming in. I would say maybe about uh, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the other thing that I, that I love about about using relish is it. It's not just the pickles. I mean, it has you know, it's a, usually a little pimento in it and some other flavors that you're not going to get if you just take some pickles and chop them up. And but the I'm not going to lie, the real reason is I'm lazy. And, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that's just it. I'm lazy. There's some things I'll make from scratch and some things I'll just buy in a jar because it's just as good. I can't make it any better. I can't make it any different. It just works. Yeah. That's one of them. I try to to do as many things as I can from scratch. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I John, do, do you want to tell them what I'm putting in here? I've got three quarter cup of mayonnaise. Yeah. 
Yeah, three quarter cup of mayonnaise. You should, I think, it's a half a cup of would be Creole mustard. I think you're using some other another mustard. Coarse ground. Yeah, I'm gonna use um, this. It's called the Papadou, and it's mustard, but it's got um, Conte pepper, chipotle peppers. Oh, so that's a nice spicy mustard. Yeah. Have you tasted it? Is it is it spicy? Yes, I like okay. it. Creole uh, instead, of, instead of using a half, I think I'm going to just start with maybe a third, and we'll see how uh, it goes. Well, actually, what I was going to say is, is cut that down to a quarter. Okay. And then, and then increase your Dijon. Okay. That's what I'll do. So, there you go. Just yeah, that's about a quarter. And then kick up your, your Dijon and by a quarter cup. Dijon, so I'll add more Dijon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, the biggest thing is, is... Go ahead. And the reason why you're doing that, Joe, you want to probably explain to them? The reason that the reason that I suggest she do that is because what she has is a spicy pepper, mm -hmm. uh, is is her alternative for Creole mustard. And despite the name Creole mustard, Creole mustard is not hot. Right. It's it's a nice smooth, just coarse ground. Right. It's I, actually, I it actually it actually has a lot, so, yeah. it actually has a mild and, and that's a common assumption, but it actually has a milder flavor than most mustards, even mm -hmm. yellow mustard. It's a little it's a little milder. It's a little sweeter. Name is a little misleading. Yeah. Okay. Um, Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And and the other reason is because she's always, she's using andouille sausage itself. Right. And if she's using a kielbasa, I would have said just stick with the the recipe because you want to kick up a little heat. But andouille is going to have have some heat on its own. So you don't want to over you don't want to kill your potatoes. Kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Because you can't eat it. I'll be adding more mayonnaise if I do that. <laughs> yeah. But actually, if you, if it gets too hot, don't add more mayonnaise. Add more sugar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sugar will actually balance just, just and go with a sprinkle at a time until you get it just right. Sugar will actually counteract heat, capsaicin. In a okay. Dish. I like to, I use sugar cubes a lot. Do you know how many sugar cubes is actually a teaspoon? Uh, no, crush them up and uh, crush them up. Yeah. I think yeah. one is a teaspoon, but don't hold me to that. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, I think I think one cube is equivalent to a teaspoon because when some people order two sugars in their in their tea, it's usually two teaspoons yeah, or, their, or their coffee. Yeah. Um, you're right, and it yeah. doesn't look like it would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you, well, if you're using cubes too in this recipe, you're gonna want to crush it up like like I just told you to, not throw it in there and try to get it to mix up because it's not gonna. Be <laughs> yeah, because it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's not like tossing it into hot coffee or hot tea or something. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Crushed, and it did turn out to be a teaspoon. One teaspoon yeah. of sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did half of a large Vidalia onion, so that's how much I came up with. That looks about right. Okay. And do you have the other half? I do. Can you show Can it? Can see it? Yeah. And there's a lot of regions in Larry, I'm not sure if you can get Vidalia's all the time. And there's a lot of times you can't get Vidalia onion. Vidalia is a sweet onion that is grown in only in regions of Georgia. Yeah, when I, when, I lived, when I lived in the U.S., I only cooked with Vidalia because I love, it is a sweet onion and yeah, I love nice, using it. It's yeah. a nice sweet. The, the best alternative that I've found is a, a sweet uh, onions from uh, South America. Okay. Now yeah, we do get those. Yeah. We 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 do we do get those. Um, yeah. We, but we don't get the Vidalia from Georgia, yeah. from the U.S. Yeah. So Vidalia so, that, so if you can't, so if you can't, it, it, it is actually, copyrighted. Yeah, and it's and it's, well, it's protected. Yeah. It actually it's actually protected. You can't sell a Vidalia onion as a Vidalia onion unless it grows within. I think it's 13 counties or something like that in right. Georgia. It it has a there's a certain. Um, I want to say it's. Something in the soil, and I, it's not calcium, but I can't quite remember without looking it up. And Google to the rescue. So, what point are we at right now? I'm just going to mix up, I'm mixing up these, um, the sauces, the mayonnaise, the mustard, the salt, the pepper, and the sugar, and then I'll show you what it looks like. I knew it was something weird. It's actually the, the amount of sulfur that's in the soil is what gives oh, us. Okay. 
and and the and actual varieties. There's certain varieties that are deemed by the committee that can be grown as Vidalias. Okay. Um, so it's, so a lot of people think that a Vidalia is is one specific variety, and it's not. Okay, that's what my sauce looks like. Uh huh. Nice. Looks good. Uh -huh. All right, maybe I should grab the potatoes and put them in there? You think? Yeah, do whatever you want. Mm. All right, I'm going to go, wait one cold. And so, you got the, so you got the uh, lime zest. You, did you put lime uh, juice and lime zest in there, too? I didn't see that on this. I have lime and lime zest. You want some? It's not on yeah, the actually, yeah, it actually it is on the recipe. Thank you very much. Oh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong recipe. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? You know what? Add some if you want. I don't care. No, don't. I was looking at the wrong recipe. I have, I have I have that doesn't sound good. a little zest? I, you know, just a little zest. That might be good. Let's try that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Easily done. It, this is what happens when my ADHD kicks in. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I was trying to think of the ingredients, what, are, what were all in it, and I was like, oh, I'm going to look, and I went back and looked, and I'm looking at the wrong recipe. I'm like, oh, wait. Okay, got a lime here, and mm. I have my little microplaner thing, so yeah. how much do you think? Yeah, half half of the, uh, just half of the lime. You don't need a lot. And a lot of people, you know, they, they you see recipes with, you know, zesting a lemon or zesting a lime, and it, it just adds this just hint. Just enough. Yeah, exactly. It's just enough. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it really is, and that's probably good right there. Right there, right. Right, mm -hmm. right. And the one thing you want to be careful with when you're zesting though is is don't go too deep into the white because the white gets bitter. white will bitter. Just yeah, the sorry. green. Yeah, just the mm -hmm. green. You want to get just the green. Start seeing white move to a different spot and keep going. Mm -hmm. so when yeah, I make my um. Pretty. And. What I usually do, Bobby, is uh, at this point is I'll actually put the potatoes and the sausage in a bowl and then pour the sauce over them. It helps. Okay. Them. So, or or you can just toss them in that and try to toss everything together, but it might be a little bit much to toss. And if you can't find a larger bowl, I will always whip out a big pot because that makes a great... I've got, I've got one. It's just a metal one, so we'll be able to see it. But I'll, uh, and I've got a pretty bowl to put it into, because we have to put our taste salad into a pretty bowl. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what it looks like in the kitchen when you're putting it together, just as long as it looks great once you present, you know, put it on the table. Yeah, yeah. presentation is everything. Yeah. And for the presentation to me means on my plate. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. It does. Okay, let's have the potatoes. Mm -hmm. And they are cold. Yeah, they should be they should be a little warm but cool to the touch. They are a little warm. They're not they're not cold, but they're still they're not yeah. steaming anymore. All right. And here comes the rest of them. That's three full pounds of red potatoes. Joe, you're gonna Put any um, chives or chop up some chives and put for this. So the, the, uh, I don't, you know, I'm not a huge fan of chives. I know a lot of people are, and that's a, you know, you can use that. Um, I actually prefer to just go with the Vidalia onion in there, mm -hmm. and then chop up and and for some color and some extra green flavor, I'll actually go oh, with some yeah. Italian parsley. And okay. I'll, I'll chop I'll chop some Italian parsley and, and to either toss that in there, you know, when when you put the vegetables in with everything, or you know, afterwards as a garnish. But I love Italian parsley because it has a just slight green taste and it, but it doesn't have that. Chives some can can real quickly become overpowering, and that's all you taste, especially when mm -hmm. they're fresh. I cook with them all the time, but when they're, they're using fresh, some people don't, I don't like them. When they over, take over okay. dish. Too much garlic, or is that good? It was three cloves, but they were large yeah. cloves. That's that's perfect. In fact, I, yeah, that's fine. And if you read some of my if you mm. read some of my recipes, I'm usually guessing at the, at the amount of garlic in here because I, I'm like you. I grab the biggest cloves I can find. I, I use oh. I use a lot of garlic in my cooking. Tons I do of too. I, I love. The, I've actually um, gotten to where I I use more garlic, less salt. 
it's healthier. Right. And you still kind of get a similar taste to it. You, you can't replace salt altogether with it, but you can certainly replace quite a bit of it. Correct. So you got all the vegetables in there. And I do. And I'm going to start to go. pour that over here in a minute, and then we're going to transfer it. Yeah. Go ahead and toss so, it, yeah. so she's tossing up the, um, the andouille and the um, potatoes, right? So the potatoes and the onions and, and the, the celery. And the celery and the garlic. Mm -hmm. So everything except the 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 uh, dressing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And now at this point, you just basically pour the dressing over. And you, if you're going to refrigerate it, you don't have to toss. But I usually give it a quick toss once I pour that dressing over, just to make sure everything gets coated. I'm probably going to put it right back in here and throw it over there in the freezer. There you go. That'll actually work out. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about that lime zest. I'm glad you told me to have that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm I'm glad I came up with that uh, that idea too. That was a uh, one of my more genius moves. I mean, lime zest would to me it'll just give it another yeah, layer it of flavor. Yeah, and lime zest lime zest is one of those things too. It's, I just it's kind of one of those magical ingredients in some recipes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, like, it's kind of mm -hmm. like a pinch of nutmeg in something. It just right, adds, exactly. it takes it, it takes it to another level. To the next level. Yeah. It's like yeah. a pinch of cayenne. You don't know what quite what it is. Yeah. Perfect. This smells really good, Joe. It, it should. Good. Should and, and the, the andouille is going to add this, especially since she grew up, it's going to add this really nice smoky flavor that you won't mm. get in normal potato salad. And so she, she grilled the andouille earlier. earlier she grilled on. the andouille earlier, which is, mm. what, uh, which is what I usually do with it. Mm -hmm. And in a pinch, I mean, you can get away with just uh, cooking it and getting it hot. Uh, no, but I like, I like, I like the idea, I like the idea of, 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 the, of the grill because it will give it that smoky, smoky flavor. And, I mean, potato salad right. and uh, grilled food Goes well together. Goes great. I, I mean, usually having yeah. it at a picnic anyway, even barbecue, mm -hmm. potato salad right, is really exactly. common. Yeah. The other thing, the other purpose of cooking it and the bigger part is to give the outer skin, because the, the sausage is already cooked, yeah. just smoked right. sausage. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just to, it's not really to heat it up, it's actually to give that outer skin uh, a, a crispiness and a, a nice flavor. That's okay. Jazzy's going to pop in here and have a bite. She's one that loves warm potato salad, so I think she's going to like okay. it. Oh, let's, let's see how this is. It's really good. Is it? Mm -hmm. See? Those spices. Yeah, it makes yeah. you want to slap your mama, though. Just go <laughs> No, seriously, slap her. That's the oh, name yeah, of the recipe. Slap your mama. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's a winner. Yeah. That looks great. But yeah, and it's. The nice thing about potato salad, too, uh, is, is one, it's, it's, it's still good for you. I mean, it does have mm -hmm. a level of not good for you, but it's but it's not so you know, bad that you know you're gonna feel guilty about eating, and it's it's great for 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 the diabetics out there who can't eat the um, regular Irish potatoes or 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 the starch potatoes, um, they can use the sweet potatoes, right? Uh, how, how how is this in in um how sweet potatoes in a in a potato salad? I mean, I've tried it. I've never done sweet potato salad. I think that might be my next. I haven't either, but I'm yeah. willing to try that for sure. I I I had to do it because my brother-in-law is diabetic. But he can have uh, sweet potatoes. He can have sweet potatoes, yes, because it's a complex carbohydrate. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So um. and. Sweet potato salad is lovely, and when you when you put the the, the lemon zest or the, the lime zest in this case, yeah, I'm, well. I'm a yeah, mm. and then there's there's two parties when it comes to zesting. It's either lemon or lime, and I'm just I'm a huge fan of of, of lime over, over. I'm a huge lemon. fan of lime too. I am a huge fan it, of lime. Because it not, yeah. only has, it not only has that kind of sour, citrusy taste to it, but it has its own little unique greenish mm -hmm. flavors to it. That 
to just and the limes, the limes we get down here are basically key lime that you guys get in yeah. in uh, Florida. Which in, you know, um, key limes, anybody knows, yeah. are about that big around. They're not big. Yeah, around. they're small. Exactly. Yeah. So you basically uh, have to use like three limes to get. <laughs> absolutely. Half of a half of the lime just. Yeah. Mo most of the trees down here we have are key lime. Yeah. yeah. And they're those good. They have a limes. great flavor. The yes, they are. Really good. I mean, it's it's very vibrant. It's very it's, it's bright. It's, it's much it's much uh it's much stronger than than a regular mm -hmm. lime. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm, okay, I have some. Hey Melvin. Hey Melvin, how are you? What's going on? Hey everybody, how you doing? Okay. Oh my God, that lime. Mm. Perfect. Okay, let me go edit my recipe now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Da -da. Well, folks, we just witnessed Bobby today making Joe Boland's slap your mama potato salad. Potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's making me hungry as usual. I mean, I hate I hate this because everybody cooks on the other side. They taste it. I'm <laughs> over here. My oh, glass I'm is looking. empty. I have I have no more no more tea. Joe, you have any more tea on your side? I have a little bit. I, I had, of course I started off uh, a little bigger. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but Bobby, that looks great. That looks great. Thank you. So. Uh, you guys want to take us out? Monica, Sangye, thanks for stopping in. Oh, thank you for having um, us. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, I'm going to go fun. cook up some good food for dinner. You got all made me very <laughs> hungry. <laughs> well, that's, I'll get some pictures up, and I'm sure Joe will yeah. share his recipe, and we'll just keep trying to share these jewels from the south. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm adding, I'm adding, uh, adding the lime uh, just. Oh, I was saying one of these days we gotta get Miles in the cook in the kitchen cooking. Who are we gonna get? Monica. Monica. <laughs> That's oh. right. Like I said, maybe Nathan can assist me some sometime. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That'd be great. Yeah. Have have, I usually have three people running around here helping me. We'll have to move okay. my chair over towards the kitchen. Yeah. No problem. And you you could you could dock the orders. Work. Yeah. But yeah, he, he does. He's very good at cooking. And one of the f when I first met him, he actually said, "I have to tell you, the men do the cooking in my family." And mm. I said, "That's fine by me." Hey, you're not gonna argue, are you? Yeah. Hey, so let me guess. Did he get Did he get more brownie points when he told you that? He did. Yeah. <laughs> I raised my eyebrows. I was skeptical. I was like, "You're gonna have to prove this," but he proved it. So. Well, can we get him on there, and you assist yeah. him? There we go. Yeah, that'd, that'd, I think I, I think he's over here right now. Let me ask him if that's okay. You're being hey, paid Bobby, to a hangout, dear. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby, if you get a chance, um, take a nice, pretty picture of that. Uh, you know I will. That, uh, yeah. yeah. Because I just realized I, d I never I never took a picture <laughs> the last time I made it, so I need another. I need. I'll do it. I'll take a picture of that next to some ribs and some uh, collard greens. How's that? Oh, hey, hey, Nathan. The cooking show with uh, Larry and Bobby today. Yeah, this this is Bobby's show and Joe Boland. She just made Joe Boland's um, Slap Your Mama potato salad, which looks fantastic. So, Melvin had a great idea of having you guys cook a recipe on, on Bobby's show. At your convenience, of course. What do you think? Well, if you want to. Sure. Okay. Sure, right. we can talk you about that. Yes. I was Taylor, telling them that. Taylor, you guys like, like as well, so we'll see. And, and I, would, um, I would like to also have you guys cook on the Caribbean show. Cook some Caribbean after you cook some Southern. You just oh, keep sure. going south. You, keep, you yeah, just well, keep going yeah. south. Yeah, he loves is, uh, spicy food. All oh, right, yeah. bragging about your skills. So, yeah. Well, then we can, we can <laughs> I don't know if I've ever cooked over anything Mexico. southern or Caribbean, but uh, don't worry well, about he has it. cooked dal before, which is a very spicy Indian food. Yeah, yeah. but so we gotta you know, learn some Caribbean I don't, spices. I don't know. We I'm never cooked Caribbean, yeah. and now that's you know it's kind of what we do. It's just 
it's not I think, at home. May, I think maybe uh, Bobby and I were talking a while back about doing a country fried steak, and I think maybe a, gym, a, a jerk country jerk fried steak. Jerk fried steak. steak. My mm. Ah, ah, that's a good idea. Um, and we could we could do it right here on on, on Bobby's show. We kill two birds with one stone. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, mm. a jerk uh, country have, fried steak. I have to have yeah. to toy around with that idea. See what I can come up yeah. with. Yeah, I will. I will give you my my jerk recipe, Joe, and you just right. make it, combine it, do it, do it with your country fried steak, and then um, put it in a test kitchen. With some southern gravy. There we go. Yeah, put it in your uh -huh. test kitchen, and then Monica and um, Nathan will will do it. Okay. That's well, sounds movie. good. I'll send you some. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll send you a message, Larry, and we'll try and work out a date. Yeah, that's great. So, Bobby, okay. we will we'll be cooking it on your show. Bobby's show is every two weeks, Monica. So you'll you'll have okay. some time. We'll have some okay. time. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we've got some family coming at the end of July, um, so it might have to be start of August. Yeah, in August would be great. We'll yeah. get together and we'll figure We, we usually kind of uh, we're, we're fly by the seat of our family <laughs> anyway, right? She, she, she and Joe, okay. she and Joe, they're always arguing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. I can't picture that. <laughs> it, it's it's really not arguing. She just can't get through her thick head that I'm right, she's wrong, and, you know, she's <laughs> and, and for everybody that's in the chat, here's the link to the recipe that she made tonight. Um, what we could do is post it, um, Bobby. You could probably post it when you send the pictures out, or when okay. we. Okay. Yeah. No, what, what I will do, what I will do, I'll put it on the site. Yeah, and then yeah. and then yeah. put the link. Yeah, we'll we'll take and put the ingredients link on the site. Yeah, so exactly. Okay, yeah. I'll throw pictures up. Um, you mean to put them public or just send them to you, Melvin or Larry, or what, how you guys want to do it? Uh, send it to me private. Okay. Uh, and, and then, then I will it make it, Yeah, I'll, I'll put it together and then I'll send yeah. it out public when I send out the video yeah. and, and. Okay, great. And just send me send me send me well, a couple pictures uh, private now because I can take the picture and put it on the blog. Oh, the potato salad, right? Yeah, the potato salad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, folks. Or, so, or Bobby, some you want to take us out? Yeah. Yeah. But Bobby, you want to take us out? <laughs> Y'all have a great night. Thanks for cooking with us. This is what happens when you get taters and sausage together. <laughs> Send me those pictures. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.